It's good to be in the house. Yeah. It's good to be alive. Yeah. It's yeah. good to see one more Thank day. You know. It's good Thank to be you know. here. It's good to be here. Our doxology is found on page 18. We're going to open up in our hymnals yeah. for the doxology found Bless in your hymnal Bless on number 18. Yeah, yeah. turn to page 348 in the hymnal and we're going to have our hymn of adoration 348 Come and read the scripture for us. And Rip Tanya to pray for us. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our scripture lesson will come from Psalms 96, beginning at verse 1. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Shew forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. 
is worship among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. I read from Psalms chapter 96, verses 1 through 6. May God bless the reading of his holy word, and you may be seated. In request of our pastor, can we please stand to reverence God in prayer? We need to learn how to reverence God in prayer. And as we stand to our feet, we sacrifice that moment to God. Let us pray. Kind Father, we come today, God, thanking you for everything. Blessing you, dear God, for everything. Trusting you, dear God, with dangers that are seen and unseen. We know, dear God, that so many things could have happened last night in the last 12 hours, but God, you came and you stood guard at doors and windows and cars and our children, and God, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, for giving us enough energy to get to this house, God, because some of us, dear God, have dragged one thing and some has dragged another thing, but God, we knew once we got in your presence, God, that we knew we can cast all all of our cares on you. God, you said come boldly before your throne of grace. And now, God, we offer this hour of worship and praise to you, God. Come in, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Do whatever you want to do in this moment. Change words if you want to change words. And give songs, dear God. Whatever you need to do, God, break the chains in this place, God. We sit humbly before your throne of grace. We sit boldly at your feet for God. We know that no one can give us instruction like you. So God, we honor you. We honor you and we worship you right now, God. We thank you for the word, God, that you have placed in the heart of our pastor, God. A word that he's toiled over and sat with a word, God, that he's cultivated and you poured your spirit on. So God, when he opened up his mouth, God, let lives be changed. Let bonds be broken, God. Let hell get afraid and back on back up. Because God, we are ready to hear what you have to say. Thank you, dear God, for our pastor. Thank you for his leadership and his kindness, God. Thank you, dear God, for his tenacity and his determination to get us to where we need to be in this season. You've been good to us, God. So now, God, we give back everything back to you. We give you our attention. We give you our ears and our eyes. We give you our heart. Now, God, do whatever you want to do. Holy Spirit, this is your service. And we give you this moment. Come in, God. Rule, reign, and have supremacy in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Our soul says amen. Thank you, God.
for me. He picked me up, turned me around, laid my feet on, placed them on the holy ground. I just want to, I just want to thank him and give him the praise. Is there anybody out here that know God brought you? If you know God brought you, you ought to tell somebody. Nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like the Holy Ghost. I know he brought me. I know he taught me. I know he kept me. Kept me in the midnight hour. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, singing is hard. Singing is hard. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let the church say amen. Amen. I had to, had to go to the scraper this morning. Cold out there. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our pastor this morning. Bless you, bless you. Thank you for traveling mercy back yes, from sir. North Carolina. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, blessings go out to Mother Rice and the loss of her sister. Please continue to send prayers out to the Rice family this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, a couple quick housekeeping items before we begin the announcements. The Please, please, all questions, all questions and concerns that you have, please send those through the church office. Uh, please, let's start. Any questions or concerns that you have, let's start those with the church office, and she'll disseminate those, those questions out to the rest of who needs to get, the, get you the answer. Amen? Amen? Amen. All announcements also, please start those with the church office, and then she'll consolidate those announcements and get them to me. And I will announce them on Sunday mornings. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, and also, the pastor, as we saw earlier, the pastor has changed the way that we uh, do our prayers for uh, the altar, the invocation prayer, and also the altar prayer. So he would like for us to stand on those prayers. I know that's a change for us of what we've done in the past. Um, but please, for the invocation prayer, which is the first prayer that we have in the morning to invite the Holy Spirit into this church. Amen. We will stand. And then for the altar prayer, we will also stand and give our blessings to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, also, another brief thing, the Emerson Village Shopping Center has been sold. 
up there. So they are going to renovate that area up there. Um, it's been sold to a black-owned company. Uh -oh. Amen. Out of, out of Chicago. Um, so they're going to begin the renovations of the Evanston Village Shopping Center. So more than more to come on that. So we know there's been some, a lot of hardship up there lately, fires and, and things like that. So um, look for that to be renovated in the near future. Amen. Amen. Um, on Friday, we laid uh, Sister Louise Eaton to rest on this Friday. So please continue to pray for um, the Eaton Hopkins family um, during this time of bereavement. I want to thank Minister Newsom yeah. for a beautiful eulogy yeah. that was yeah. given on Amen. Friday. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So continue to pray for that family. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, our second shut-in list this morning, please pray for Deacon Brenda Bryant. Um, Deacon Clifton Northern, Deacon Eugene and Leona Porter, Sister Ruth White, Sister Pat Bennett, Sister Ruth Mellison, Sister Katie Green, Sister Bernadine Johnson, and Sister Anita Brown, um, Deacon Norman Murphy, Princess and Chauncey Clifton, Sister Martina Lee, Deacon Maddie Middleton, um, Sister Charlene Sorrell, Deacon Calvin Rue and his wife Vera Rue, um, Sister Jackie Dunnock, Sister Cindy Hairston, always in our prayers for Sister Hairston. God bless you. Um, Trustee Pat Taylor, as she um, recovers from her hip surgery. Yeah. Um, Trustee Janet Reeves. Yeah. Sister Sarita Warren. So please send our prayers for her and her husband. Amen. 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 Sister Darlene Sanders. And as always, send our prayers for Reverend Lamont Baker. He's traveling on vacation this week, celebrating him and his wife's birthday. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Pray for him as he gets some rest and continue to pray for him. Amen. Um, I have a card. I'm Reverend Rice, New Christian Memorial family. My family and I are very grateful for all the kind acts shown during our time of bereavement. The many visits, cards, phone calls, and love gifts truly blessed us. However, your prayers helped us to face each day without our loved one. Continue to keep us lifted in prayer while we go through our grieving period. We are forever grateful with all our hearts, Sister Pearl Smith and family. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, the Green Street, Green Street Academy, in conjunction with the Caton Avenue Neighborhood Association, will be holding yard sales each Saturday from now until December. So. If you'd like to set up a table over there, please see me after church for more of the details. Our praise and worship uh, and Bible studies is Wednesday. We've been having a fantastic time going through Genesis. Amen. 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 So please come out and be a part of that experience. Um, our family and friends day is this weekend. It is here. Amen. So there's a flyer out there with the starting time. So please pick up a, fl a flyer. Please invite your family, your friends to our event. Hopefully the weather will hold up for us. Please remember, if the weather doesn't hold, we will bring that event inside. If the weather does hold, um, we will have events outside, and there will be no parking on the parking lot out there, so you have to find a place on the street to park. So the colors for the event will be navy blue and white um, for next week. Um, and any additional questions that you have regarding the event, um, please see Sister Yvonne Wilson. Amen. 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 Yes, please come. All right. So please, there's flyers out there and uh, for the event. Just want to remind everyone, uh, Friday, for those who are available, we will be here Friday to set up, regardless of it be in inside or outside, and serve all hands on deck. So as mentioned, we still need people to help set up. Please, there's people we need to break down. And there, there are people that we need to help with the trash in the, on those days. So um, please see Sister Wilson if you want to help. Um, amen. I think I have everything. Yes. 
All right. Have a fantastic week, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for everything that you do for New Christian Memorial Church. Thank you to this ministerial staff. Continue to pray for them. Pray for me. I will pray for you. God bless you all. Have a fantastic week. Right. One more announcement for Sister Singletary. Good morning, New Christian. Good morning. I have a, just a brief announcement on behalf of the Healing Heart Support Ministry. You know, sometimes when people are grieving, we think we're helping by using some of the same old cliches, but sweet words can help, can hurt. <laughs> sweet words can hurt, sorry. And um, on October 22nd, we're having a workshop on how sweet words can hurt and we would like to invite you to join us. The Reverend Herr Vaughn will be our guest speaker and will give us some pointers on what to say in place of those old cliches. Please come out and join us for this very informative workshop. It will, be at, it will start at, on the 22nd at 11 o'clock. We'll be here at New Christian. And refreshments will be served. Thank you.
keep on running. Jesus, keep on moving, Lord, I, I keep on shouting, Lord, I, I keep on praising, Lord, I do keep on, keep on, that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. This is the time where we just Jesus. pause to welcome yeah. our visitors. I know whenever I'm visiting a church and it's that time, it's like, oh, everybody's kind of going to be looking at me. But you know, that's a good thing because you chose to come here today for a reason. We don't yeah. know what the reason is, but we are so happy to have you. Yeah. So if you are visiting, if you could stand for just a moment, that will be great. Any visitors? Amen. 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 It's such a good morning. The birds were singing. Even though it's fall, I heard some birds outside today. Uh, the leaves are changing colors, and the sun is shining. So, again, we are just happy that God sent you this way. It's a brand new day, and I'm just happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Join us anytime. Thank you for coming. Thank you for standing, and please come again. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together one more time. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'm doing the best that I can. I wish everybody could say that. We know, I know and you know that we're not all doing the best we can. We could do a little bit better, amen? You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I know I can give a little bit more praise. I know I can pray a little bit better. I know my witness can be a little bit better than what it is. I'm doing, come on, y'all, the best that I can. It's good to see you out there today. It's good to see you. I, I'm glad you journeyed this way. Thank you, visitors. Thank you, visitors. I saw somebody, somebody on that side as well. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, you don't have to stay a visitor. This is the invitation right here, the right here, right now. This is the invitation right here. You don't have to stay a visitor. You could join this church. God is so good. So he's so good. We listen, we're better with you. We're better with you. So keep on, keep on coming till you feel it in your spirit and in your soul to join the church. Amen. We thank God. You don't have to leave this place homeless. You got a home right here. We got a home right here. We thank the Lord. Thank the Lord again uh, uh, for uh, our deacon, uh, chairman of the deacon board, Deacon Ron. And thank you uh, for mentioning my mother. Uh, and thank you for the prayers and all of the cards uh, and the calls and the Facebook shout outs. I mean, I, I saw so many of them. I, I, I say, wow, I didn't, I didn't know she knew all these people. Because uh, everybody you put as friend, I said, who's that right there, Mom? She said, I don't know. Why, they, why are they your friend? She said, they asked to be my friend. And God is certainly good. We gave us traveling mercy. We all went down there. It was the first time in a long time that all five of the kids were together. Uh, we took pictures. And, you know, I was excited. Uh, just to see my brother and my sister there. Uh, we spent uh, Sunday morning in church. We had a great time. Uh, it, it, it's just, God is just good. He is just 
good. A great home-going service, uh, teddy bears all over the place. Uh, God has certainly been good to us. And I thank, uh, even on yesterday, uh, not yesterday, on Friday, uh, Sister Hopkins was, uh, or Hopkins rather, was laid to rest. So we thank God for uh, our, our minister uh, who prayed and preached up a storm. We thank the Lord. Uh, he grew up with the family, so we thank the Lord for that, just for giving us an opportunity to share back or to give back. Uh, that's what she has given to us over the years. We thank the Lord for your presence. Uh, I know I saw a whole bunch of new Christian out there. It was good to see you guys. Listen, you're going to be in that same spot sooner or later. Uh, just keep on getting up and going to bed, and sooner or later, you're going to find yourself in that same spot, and you're going to want somebody to say, I'm praying for you in that moment. Amen. Amen. So don't forget about the families. Please don't forget about the families. Make sure that you uh, keep calling them. That you stop by if you call first. <laughs> don't just pop in. The Lord knows don't just pop in. Call first and let them know that you're coming by. Bring, a, bring one of them great casserole dishes that you like to bring. Bring them something to eat. Bring them something. If you don't have anything that you're going to bring to eat, bring them some money. Ain't nobody going to turn down the lettuce. Ain't nobody going to turn down the lettuce. And it's, it helps. It, it helps. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with money. There's always a, the ministry of presence is better to be there. But if you can't be there, make sure that you share with them some funds. That way it helps them out uh, as they go along. Because burying folk is expensive. Oh, y'all might not know that because everybody you know is still alive. But burying folk is expensive, so you want to make sure uh, that you add to their coffers and, that, and bless them. Amen? Hey, listen, we got a Family and Friends Day coming up. Put your hands together for Family and Friends. We're doing an amazing job. The committee is meeting. The committee has gotten together. Uh, it is going to be amazing. Make sure you are there. Don't, don't let somebody tell you about it. You know how you go to the movies, and then you, and somebody asks you, how was it? If you wanted to see it, you should have came yourself. So go, and it's never as good when they try to tell you about it. But if you're there, you can tell it yourself. You can tell it yourself. And we thank God. We're having a friend raiser on that day or on, on next Sunday, a friend raiser. That's everybody is going to invite family and friends to the church. We're going to overflow this church with our family and our friends uh, uh, Dr. Shavana is a uh, whitehead is going to be here to preach. We, hey man, come on somebody, come on, come on somebody. A family and a friend of the church. So listen, if you bring the most family and friends, we got having a friend raiser. So if you bring the most and you got to register everybody, we're gonna be at the front door. You're gonna have to register. They're gonna stand up, and you can't stand up for two people. So they say, Reverend Rice, how many you got? And everybody stand up. And then they say, uh, 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 Reverend Saulus, how, how many you got? And then the same people stand up. No, we're not doing that. Stand up for one person. Amen. And if you bring the most, there are two tickets waiting for you for our crab feast that we're going to have second Saturday in November. Ain't nobody clapping, ain't nobody saying nothing. We are having a crab feast. Now, now, November, second Saturday in November, we're gonna have our crab feast. I think that's the 12th. I could be, could be a little off. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, good, good. All right, so the 12th of November, we're gonna have a crab feast. Listen, it's gonna be $75 a piece, all you can eat, and it will be other food too. So if you don't like crab, and the menu will be out, on, and, the, and the tickets will be on sale on next Saturday at our family and friends. Day. On our next Saturday on our family and friends. So make sure they'll be out, they'll be out, they'll be ready, and all the menu be already gotten together, and you'll know all about it. We're going to get together as a family and as a church, and we're going to enjoy one another. Amen? Amen. 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 Listen, it, I don't know why folk come to church, come to church if they're not going to have fun. Why you come to church and, and not go, 
Man, it's too much sad stuff happening out there. I, I, I'm a daggone if I'm going to walk in church and not have a good time. Amen, amen, amen. Thank, thank you all. Thank everybody who came to advance directives, uh, and got all your stuff done with the lawyers. Thank you so much. You're benefiting your family. And those who don't know what I'm talking about, you missed it. You missed it. It was, it was well over 40, 50 people who came out and got their advanced directive, and that's what you want to do. If you want some more information on it, uh, you can see uh, Reverend Solace, and he will give you uh, uh, the number to the young lady who is going to help you if you need more information on that advanced directive. Just getting your stuff in order for when you pass. Oh, 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 you will pass. Oh, ain't nobody listening to me. They think they're going to live forever. You will pass. And, and if you don't, somebody else will. And you're going to want to help them, and you want to be in a good position to help them. So thank you so much for all of those who came out, and we appreciate you so much. One more time, let's give God the glory for the great things he has done. And as Reverend Silas prepares to Can you, Rem Lassiter, pray for us this morning at, at our altar prayer when he get prepare himself to pray? Amen. That's that's what I need. That's what I need. That's what I need to hear. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Rem Terrell is going to pray for us. Cause listen, anybody here in need of prayer? And anybody here in need of prayer? Listen, listen. Look at all these hands. Anybody want prayer? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, just because you're in need, somebody saying, I don't want you praying for me. Just pray for yourself. As he stands and prays, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and pray for you. He's going to pray for us. You pray for you. That the Lord will keep you going. That the Lord will continue to bless you. And I know you've been blessed. Pray, pray for you. I don't do this all the time. Most of the time, I'm telling you pray for somebody else. I need you to pray for you. If you can't pray for you, don't look at me. So pray for you. Amen? Come on, pray. let's pray. We're standing on our feet. Everybody's standing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. God, we thank you that you're God and you're God all by yourself. Oh God, we come here this morning to say thank you for waking us up and starting us on our way. God, we thank you that we haven't been perfect, but you've still been good. God, in fact, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Oh God, yes, we're made up on the outside and we're made up on, the, uh, on our shoes and our ties and our dresses. But God, there are some things that are going on wrong on the inside of us. Makeup can't really cover it up. Y'all better hear me in here. Oh God, we pray right now that you would begin to break down those broken places in our lives. Those things that we can't tell nobody about. Those broken relationships. Those messed up children. Those strongholds that are on our lives. Oh God, we ask that you would send your anointing in this place and begin to fix those broken places. Oh God, there are some family members that are struggling with some stuff. There are some co-workers that are struggling with some stuff. There are some church members that are struggling with some stuff. Oh, Lord, there are some of us that are struggling with some stuff. Oh, God, we ask that you would send your anointing into the secret places of our heart, into those places we haven't told nobody about, that you might deliver us, God, through these changes. Oh, God, there are some marriages on the rocks. Come on, God. preacher. There are some 
health problems people got. Yes, sir. They ain't yes, told sir. nobody about. Yes, sir. Oh, God, but you are a healer, Lord. Yes, you are. God, you are our healer. Yes, you oh, are. Oh, God, look around this place. Somebody was thinking about throwing in the towel. Somebody was thinking about giving up. God, you said the steps of a good man uh -oh. are ordered Fix by the up. Lord. Help us to understand that everything we go through, God, is a lesson. Yeah. We got to learn what we got to learn. And if we don't learn it, God, God Almighty, good we got to go back again. Back good up. God from back Zion. Up. Oh, God, have your way in this place. Please. God, teach us how to pray. Please. God, show us how to worship you more. Because, God, through worship, we can get to the other side. Yes. Oh, God, if there's any malice in our heart, if there's any envy in our heart, we ask that you would forgive it, God. Forgive us for our sins and our iniquities. Help us to be the man or woman of God you called us to be. Yes, we've got some hiccups. Yes, we've got some hurdles. Yes, we've got some stuff that we're dealing with. But God, your grace is sufficient. Thank you, Lord. God, teach us how to love those who despitefully use us. God, teach us how to speak to those who we ain't spoke to in years. God, teach us how to humble ourselves to give you the glory and realize, God, you ain't made one mistake yet. Of all the things you've done, God, you haven't made one mistake not yet. One, not, one. not one mistake not one, yet. Not one. Yes, some folk are sick. Some folk have died. Some folk have gone, lost their mind. But God, you ain't made one mistake yet. Some folk are still struggling with drugs. Some folk are still struggling with alcohol. Some folk, marriages is all jacked up. But you ain't made one mistake yet. Not yet. Come on. Earth has no sorrow. I said, Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. God, teach us how to surrender teach us, teach us. Our, our weakness to you. Teach us how to surrender our problems to you. And God, when you do what you do, bless the man of God that you've brought over this house. Give him the strength to endure till the end. God, you have prepared him, he and his wife, for such a time as this. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yes, they're going to say some things. Yes, he's going to make some mistakes. Yeah. Yes, there's going to be some, some turmoil. Yeah. But God, you have prepared them thank you, Lord. for such a time yeah, thank you. as this. Bless the Lord. Because God, you are the ultimate plan maker. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 and you still haven't made one mistake. <laughs> one mistake. <laughs> God, somebody got tears in their eyes. Somebody got a sickness that they say they can't get through. The doctors have said some things and the nurses have said some things. But God, we lift them to you right now. If it's cancer, God, then do what you do. God, if it's whatever the sickness is, we ask that you would do what you do. You be the doctor. You be the lawyer. You be the surgeon. You be the nurse. You be the medicine. You be the hope. You be it, God, because you still haven't made one mistake. Yeah. God, we'll be ever so careful yeah. to give your name the praise. You, and the people who love God said amen. 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 And amen. amen. Bless the Lord. 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 Come on, once again, put your hands together. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Reverend Lassiter, thank you so much for that soul-stirring prayer. Thank you so much. It is, it is good to be able to depend on the folk that walk in the vineyard with you. Thank you, Reverend Lassiter. Thank you, Reverend Solace. Thank you, Brother Kevin, Reverend Kevin. And thank you, thank you, Sister Tanya Gray, for stepping in on last Sunday. Yes. She preached her heart out. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Great things he has done. While, while, while the trustees are coming, we just want to thank you again.
for being part of this church. Don't, don't just be in name only. Get involved in your church as your church tries to get involved in the neighborhood and make this neighborhood a little bit better. Amen? As you make the church a little bit better, the church will try to make the neighborhood a little bit better. Y'all remember when the, when the church was the beacon in the neighborhood? When all of the kids went to that church that was in the neighborhood? Y'all act like we done forgot when we used to bring our children to church. Ain't nobody bringing their kids to church. They, you want to go to church, baby? No, ma'am. Okay. Oh, I said no, ma'am. They really said, uh-uh. As we get our tithes and our offerings together, uh, we know that God's been good to us. And, and all you want to, let your offering be a tangible barometer for your love level to God. So if you love him, you ought to keep his commandments. He said, bring all your tithes into the storehouse that they might be meat in my house. And we're going to continue to take that, what you give us, and use it for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. And not just the building out here, but the neighborhood and everybody who needs help inside. I noticed something about God's church. Everything you need is in the house. Somebody ain't hearing me. Everything you need is in the house. Somebody need a carpenter. Somebody need an electrician. Somebody need a plumber. Every last one is in the house. Somebody need a seamstress. Somebody need a prayer warrior. It is in the house. So you make sure you, you put yourself to work in the house. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Can we give a hand to this choir over here, this male chorus over here, just singing their hearts out? Amen. 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 Maurice, the only one up here with hair. Amen. Praise the Lord. And give him a couple weeks. He goes. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I can talk about them. I can talk about them. I can talk about them, can I? I, I, see, see, I can. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads. We thank you for this offering that we're already gathering. We ask that you bless it and give them back 10, 24 of what they give to you. Maybe in health, maybe in wealth, maybe in welfare, but give it back to them that they might have me in their house as well. We thank you, Lord, for all the givers. And God, we know you love a cheerful giver. Put smiles on our faces and joy in our heart as we give unto the Lord. This is our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Dreams. church Yeah. 
Sometimes you got to clean up. Watch this. Watch this. Well, you messed up. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, y'all done spilled something in the kitchen and walk away. It's usually the husband. Is that right, Rick? <laughs> you got to learn to clean up what we messed up. You're getting way too excited, Rep, uh, Miss Rice. Way too excited. Amen. God has certainly been good and is being good right now. If you got your Bibles with you, we're not going to hold you long. We got stuff to do, places to go, and people to see. Any, anybody coming to Bible study? Anybody coming to Bible study? All right, all right, all right. Listen, keep coming. And because we're having such a good time, in Bible study. Amen? Amen. It, it's not only informative, it's fun. We actually enjoy, and that's what God, that's what God wants the reading and the and learning of the word to be fun. He wants you to enjoy it. Amen? He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Listen, I know we're in Genesis right now, and, 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 and we got people who want to go to Romans. <laughs> but we're going to stick to Genesis and do the best we can with that. Amen? You got your Bibles. Turn to Philippians 2 and 5. Philippians. <laughs> Second chapter. Fifth verse. Amen. Amen. If you, when you get it, stand on your feet if you would. Stand on your feet, huh? Stand on your feet, yeah. We're going to be like a Catholic church today. We're going to be on our feet, sitting down, on our feet, sitting down. It's all good. It's all good. It's a short verse. When you find it, stand on your feet. Amen. Amen. Philippians, second chapter, fifth verse. I just want to read this one verse. just want to read this one verse. Amen. Most, of be, most people are standing up. Most people say, I ain't even looking for it. All right. <laughs> Philippians 2 and 5 says this out of the King James Version of the Bible. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You may be seated. Man, we took longer getting up, finding it, than we did reading it. For a few moments, while the time is ours to spend, I want to preach real hard from the subject, have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? Let's pray. Dear Lord, help me to help you help somebody. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have you lost your mind? If, if we were honest with each other this morning, we would have to admit that this is not the first time we've had this question 
posed to us. Have you lost your mind was a frequent phrase in my house growing up. My mother and my father would often use these words when catching us in the act of doing something that was against the house rules. Have you lost your mind would often be a precursor to a scolding or a beating. You see, we didn't just get yelled at. We got, I ain't the only one. I, I see some of y'all sitting down very gingerly. You, if you ever heard, have you lost your mind, you knew not long from there would be some laying on of hands. <laughs> so I got to clean it up for the church folk. Yes. If you ever had the misfortune of being in earshot of those infamous comments, then there would soon be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh -oh. so that's Bible study right there. Somebody... Have you lost your mind is an informal idiom, uh, meaning to become mentally ill or start behaving in a s silly or strange and unproductive way. Uh -huh. You just spent all that money on a pair of suede pumas. Have you lost your mind? But the Philippian truth is that the only way we can gain the mind or the way of thinking as of Christ is if we lose our own. Come on now. See, I don't, I already, that, that already should preach itself. The Bible says in Second uh, and, 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 and Second Philippians or, or Philippians two and five says, "Let this mind be in you, the same that was in Christ Jesus." And if we're going to have that mind of Christ, we have to lose our own. You, you, you cannot possess two minds at the same time. That's called schizophrenia. And that's another sermon altogether. And you ain't paying me enough money to be your psychiatrist too. James 1 and 8 says this, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you can't have two minds. Uh -huh. So in order to take on the mind of Christ, uh -huh. you have to lose. So the question comes again, have you lost your mind? Uh, uh, when, 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 when viewing the mind of Jesus Christ through the teachings and lessons of the Bible, we find this man, Jesus, whose mind was steadfast on goodness, uh -huh. set on serving the Father and devoted to teaching righteousness, faithful to obeying God, dedicated to being the example of how a child of God should think and live for the Creator. Uh -huh. That's the mind of Christ. The mind of Jesus Christ stayed on things that were whatsoever true. The mind of Jesus Christ stayed on things that whatsoever were honest, whatsoever things were just, whatsoever things were pure, whatsoever things were lovely, whatsoever things were of good report, that these were what the mind of Jesus stayed on. Uh -huh. Philippians 4 and 8 said this, if there be any virtue yeah. and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what Jesus thought about. And I'm asking you, have you lost your mind that you'll be able to take on the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is filled with forgiveness. The mind of Christ is filled with grace, mercy, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Those things are the mind of Christ. Have you lost yours and taken on his? As a child of God, as we live our daily lives, we strive to accomplish this assignment. Most of us, if we have, in the framework of this Christian constituency, if we have to, uh, even tried to be like Christ, we've tried to do those things. We try to be forgiven. Negroes make it hard. Yeah. 
We try to be loving and we try to be faithful and we try to have joy and we try to have peace and definitely trying to long suffer or to suffer long. Folk will make that hard. Watch this. They made it hard on Jesus, but he still had the right mind. When a member of, of society fails to act or conduct his or herself in accordance to the rules or the norm of society, they are said to have a mental problem. They are referred to as being a little touched. Have you ever been referred to as being a little? You don't even know. Folk been talking about you and you don't even know. They've been touched, a little touch, or not right when, when they say that that person has lost their mind. But I come by to tell you that's a good thing. Bible tells us peculiar people. And if we're peculiar, that means we've adopted and adapted the mind of Christ. So in order for that to happen, Rice, we got we to gotta lose our mind. You can't think what you want to think. Bible says this, uh, uh, Brother Powell, that, that so a man think of. So you better make sure that you take on the mind of Christ. Church, when we as Christians fail to let the mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus, then we have not let go of our own way of thinking. In order to take on the mind of our Lord and our Savior, we must first lose our mind. Let me, let me see if I can elaborate on this and why it's important to lose your mind. Uh, uh, Paul applies a lesson before he even states it. Paul, Paul will in wonderful detail. Describe for us the mind of Jesus in the following verses. But here, before he describes the mind of Jesus, he tells us what we must do with the information. Paul does not give all uh, that is in the mind of Christ in these verses. He selects those qualities of our Lord that fits the need of the church at Philippi. Philippi, named after the father of Alexander the Great, was a miniature duplicate to that of Rome, even down to its aqueduct systems. Philippi was a little Rome, and, 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 and he was trying to tell the church at Philippi at that moment, this lack of unity that you have, and the Philippian saints became the occasion, perhaps, the greatest Christological passage in the New Testament that defines the will of God toward his children. Let this mind be in you. You're looking at the example of the mind. You're looking at Jesus Christ. You have to take his example and place it on you. So that somebody will look at you and say, I like the Christ in you. Let this mind be in you. It's all too easy for us to read the following description of Jesus and admire it from a distance. God wants us to not just admire it, but he wants us to be awed by it. But also to see it is something that we must enter into uh, 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 and imitate. We can't just enter and not do nothing with it. But also to see it is something that we must enter and, and let this mind means that it is something that we have a choice about. Y'all see that? Y'all see? Y'all see? Let allow this mind to be in you the same that was in Christ Jesus. Remember also that this mind is something granted to us by God. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 and 16 says this, that we have, that we have the mind of Christ. We got it already, but let this mind shows us that it's something we must choose to walk in. You already got it, you just got to use it. 
Somebody missing this. Uh, should I slow this down? You already have it. Now you just got to use a car. Does no good to buy it off the showroom floor and keep it topped up in your garage and never drive it. You got it. You might as well. Bible says you have the mind of Christ already. You just got to let it be. Let it be. The mind or the brain, rather, is the most complex part of the human body. This three-pound organ is the seat of intelligence, uh, an interpreter of the senses, initiator of body movement, and a controller of behavior. Lying in its bony shell and washed by a productive fluid, the brain is the source of all qualities that define our humanity. The brain is the crown jewel of the human body. But for us to be on or get on the same page as God the Father, we must turn over that which controls our feet to him that who orders our step. For us to get on, to be on the straight and narrow, we must relinquish which powers our tongue to that which speaks to our heart. We must surrender command of what controls our thinking and allow the spirit to guard our heart and our mind. So what exactly is the difference between the mind and the brain? Well, the mind is separate yet inseparable from the brain. For many people, the mind and the brain are interchangeable. They use one word or the other to talk about the same thing. The organ in our skull that we use to think. However, the mind and the brain are actually two very different things, but interconnected uh, entities. They work together like, like peanut butter and jelly. Like, like hot cocoa and marshmallows. Like ice cream and sprinkles. Like chokers and tube tops. Ain't nobody paying no attention to me. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Somebody know. Like, like Converse and high socks. Oh. Like, like s'mores and campfires. Like sugar and Kool-Aid. Okay, I'm on your street now. Like macaroni and cheese. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 like Sundays and Golden Corral. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody listening. Like cornflakes and milk. Like moonwalk and Michael Jackson. Like bacon and eggs. Like tacos and Tuesday. Like Ron and James. They work together. The mind and the brain just work. The mind uses the brain, and the brain responds to the mind. The mind also changes the brain. People choose their actions. Their, their, their brain does not force them to do anything. Yes, there will be no or conscious uh, experience without the brain, but experience cannot be reduced to the brain's actions alone. It takes the mind. There are three parts of the brain or the mind that I want to talk about this morning, and we're going to come down from this place, that has everything to do with the mind of Christ. First part of the brain is called the cerebrum. The cerebrum is, see, I'm talking some technical stuff right here, so, so, so pay attention, Scott. All right, here we go. The cerebrum or the front part of the brain compromises gray matter and the cerebral cortex which is the cerebral cortex, and the white matter has it, it's at its center. The largest part of the brain, the cerebrum, initiates and coordinates movements and relegates temperature. Other areas of the cerebrum include and enable speech. One of the areas of cerebrum controls is speech. One way to demonstrate the answer to the question, have you lost your mind and taken on the mind of Jesus Christ, there should be something different about the way you talk. Ain't nobody paying, ain't nobody listening to me. The way, what, what you used to say. 
you don't say no no more. Well, how you used to say it. You don't say it like that no more. Who you used to say it to. You don't talk to them. I know you said, I know what you're saying, but I don't cuss as much. I hear you talking. I, I don't lie as much. I don't gossip. Yes, I do. I'm just going to admit it right now. Yes, as much. James 3 and 8 says this, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we will curse our neighbors who have been made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and curses. My brother, and these things ought not be so. So you have to take on the mind of Christ in order to prevent this stuff from happening. And I got a question. Have you lost? No man can tame this tongue but with the cerebrum of Christ says I can do all things through when I let my mind be in me and I let this mind be in me the same that was in Christ Jesus not only there's a cerebrum but there's another one called the cerebellum yeah. Scott you writing this down you know you're going to ask me later on what was that next one you said the cerebellum is called the little brain it is a fist-sized portion of the brain located in the back of the head. And some of us got more back of the head than most. You ain't got to say nothing. Just look down your road. Don't look too hard now. Somebody might be looking at you. It's, it's, it's directly below the temporal and occipital lobes and, and above the brain stem. Like the cerebral cortex, it, it has two hemispheres. The outer portion contains neurons, and the inner area communicates with the cerebral cortex. It function, its function is to coordinate voluntary muscle movements to maintain posture, balance, and equilibrium. In other words, it helps you walk. Came by to tell somebody, when I take on the mind of Christ, the Lord's cerebellum now controls the way I walk and the way I move, how I stand, and the balance and equilibrium. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, where, where you used to walk. You don't walk no more. Uh, where, where, where you used to go. You don't go no more. Yeah, uh, listen, you got to leave Odell's. Gatsby. Oh, oh, oh let's see, I know what crowd I'm talking to. I don't know nothing about the five mile house, but I know. <laughs> One way to verify and answer the question, have you lost your mind? Is there, is there or should there be something different about the way you walk? Folk ought to be able to tell that you got Christ's mind just by the places they find you. I had, I, I had the benefit, and I probably already told this story, but I'm going to tell it again, and y'all act like y'all heard it for the first time. Watch this. I was in Las Vegas. Don't act like I'm the only one ever went to Las Vegas. I know I got some Vegas here. And I thought I was so far from Baltimore that nobody would know me. And crossing, crossing the, the, the slot floor or, or, or the casino floor, crossing, I was just going to my room. I was just going. <laughs> I hear a young voice say, Pastor Rice. I dropped my coins and said, help. <laughs> Th 
They ought to know there's something different about you by the way you walk, by where they find you. If they always find you in the same places that they are, doing the same things that they do, let this mind, let this mind be in you, the same that was in Christ Jesus. The, the last one, the last one uh, is, is the brain stem. Not, not just the cerebrum or the cerebellum, but the brain stem. See how I got that a little shorter? I was going to say medulla oblongata. But I changed it because I couldn't understand what that was at the time. Hold on. The brain stem is the middle brain. It, it connects the cerebrum and the spinal cord. The brainstem includes the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The, me the midbrain uh, uh, is a very complex structure with a range of different neuron clusters and nuclei and colloquia. I said it the best way I could. Neural pathways and other structures. These features facilitate various functions from hearing, from movement, for calculated responses and environmental changes. The midbrain also contains a substantial uh, uh, an area that is affected by Parkinson's disease. That is a rich, and dopa rich in dopamine and neurons and part of the basal ganglia, uh, which enables movement and coordination. At the bottom of the brain stem is the medulla oblongata. It is where the brain meets the spinal cord, and the medulla oblongata is essential to survival. Functions of the medulla oblongata regulate many bodily activities, including heart rhythm, breathing, blood flow, and oxygen, and carbon dioxide level. The medulla oblongata produces reflexive activities such as sneezing, vomiting, coughing, and swallowing. Watch this. It is connected to the spinal cord, and it extends from the bottom of the medulla oblongata and through a large opening in the bottom of the skull. Supported by vertebrae, the spinal cord carries the message from the mind to the rest of the body. I said all that to say this. If you have taken on the mind of Christ, your body is a living sacrifice unto the Lord and your mind should be regulating what your body does. Watch this, watch this, I'm gonna mess with somebody. It regulates what you see. Too many people looking at the wrong stuff. That ain't your husband. That ain't your wife. It regulates what you hear. Too many people listening to the wrong thing. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Oh, wait a minute, wait, I forgot what crowd I'm in. Uh, 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 naughty by nature. Luke. Y'all don't, y'all act like y'all don't know Luke. Don't, don't mess with me. Watch this. So your mind controls your body. And what you do with your body and who you do it with, with your body. So your mind controls it all. And if you don't lose your mind and take on the mind of Christ, you will find yourself all over the place in any God-forsaken place there is. You know, without God, we choose the wrong way Every time. The Bible says in this Philippians chapter, therefore, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being on one accord with one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. Let this mind 
being you, the same that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth, and that tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to glory of God the Father. Have you lost? I'm, I'm done. I'm I'm done yelling, I'm done spitting, watch this. There was, got this story, I want to tell you a true story. True story, I was sitting in Gospel Tabernacle, just newly married, maybe two, two years in, loving my wife, sitting right next to her, she was sitting right next to me in church, there was an afternoon service, and there was a choir, on the choir stand, they were singing, uh, then we were going around for offering. Y'all remember when you used to go around for offering? Hold on, it's coming. All right, watch this. So the choir comes off, the offering stand comes up uh, the side aisle. There is a young girl, very pretty, very pretty girl. I just want to make sure you understand that. I'm not just looking at anybody. Watch this. <laughs> I, remember, I'm newly married. My wife is sitting next to me. I, I notice her. She notices me. She leans down, and she kisses me right next to my mouth. And my wife says, who is that? And I go, I have no idea. And she says, have you lost? <laughs> you laughing too loud, Rick. You laughing way too loud. After church, we go down to the fellowship hall. This same lady comes over to me and I'm eating my cake. <laughs> she starts talking to me, and I find out who she is. Out of the corner of my eye, I see my wife <laughs> running feverishly toward me. <laughs> she comes in between both of us steps to her with my, her back to me. I am Mrs. Rice. I don't know how many R's was in that Mrs. <laughs> and you are who? And I explained to her before the lady could even talk, I said, I had not lost my mind. This lady I went to visit when she had cancer. She was a young girl, she had cancer. She was probably about 12 or 11 when she had cancer, and she said, I prayed for her. And now she had a full head of hair. She was, she was very beautiful, very nice, very ca And she came over, and she just wanted to thank me because she remembered the prayer I had. And I looked at my wife, and I said, have you lost? <laughs> Come on, we standing up. We standing to our feet. We standing to our feet. Bible says this, let this mind be in you the same that was in Christ Jesus. So whenever you deal with anybody, whenever you deal with everybody, deal with them as Christ would deal with them. Don't, don't tell them, you don't, I wasn't always saved. I know how we do that sometimes. Don't, don't tell them that, don't tell them that uh, I, I'm going to lay my religion down. Let this mind be in you the same that was in Christ Jesus. May, there might be somebody, there might be somebody who is looking for a closer walk with Jesus Christ. You're looking to have a relationship with him like mama had, like daddy had, but you need a personal relationship if that's you and you want to be saved, I'm going to ask you to step in the aisle. 
and I'll send somebody for you. Maybe you already saved and you're looking for a church home. One that preaches and teaches the word of God, watch this, to the best of their ability. If that's you and you're looking for a church home already saved, then you step in the aisle and I'll come get you. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Who gonna join this young man? I'm gonna tell you right now, I know him. I know him. He, he actually works with me. He see me every day. And he still wanna join the church. Somebody ought to say, Somebody ought to say amen. Oh, that's because he lost his mind. Who's going to join him? Who's going to join him? Maybe, just maybe, you used to belong to New Christian, and you want to reunite with us. Now, if you've been gone for two years, three years, way well before the pandemic, and you coming back thinking you're still a member, the answer is no, you're not. Come on back and join, and we'll receive you with open arms. I don't see anybody else moving. Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord for a saved house. Thank you, Reverend Solace. Thank you. The truth is, the truth is, there's at least five to 10 other people that fit into those three categories and should be coming forth. I'm gonna wait for about another minute. It's your time. Do not let this time go. You never know what's going to happen when you walk out those doors. I don't see anybody moving. Come on, we're going to go right into prayer. And after prayer, we're going to have the right hand of fellowship. I had to turn like that because I forgot last time. We're not going to forget this time. I think that we need to pray for each other. Yeah, yeah. The truth is that's Somebody's been on your mind. Somebody's been on your mind. It might be a family member. It might be a neighbor. It might be a friend. It might have been that guy you passed. He held that sign up. Somebody has been on your mind. I need you to pray for them. While I pray out loud, I need you to get that person in your God-sanctified mind and pray for them. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads. A few of your humble, believing children, really just to say thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for loving us, us enough, loving us enough to die for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for putting yourself at risk that we might be saved. Bless now. Bless now all of these under the sound of my voice, wherever, wherever on the, in the building or online. We ask that you bless them, touch them with your hand of mercy and your finger of love. Let them know that you are God who sits high, but you look low. Bless all of them. Bless their going out. Bless their coming in. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I want to continue. Help us to continue to be good to one another. Help us to continue to be nice to one another. Help us to continue to pray for one another. And we'll be ever mindful to give your name the praise. This is our prayers. We pray. And for everybody 
who has somebody else on their mind and they're praying for them, give that person an extra special blessing. May their knees not hurt as much. May their back not hurt as much. May their head not hurt as much. May you bring back their daughter. May you bring back their son safely. Heavenly Father, may you take them off of drugs, take them out of alcohol. Heavenly Father, give them an extra special blessing. They no longer gonna be a whoremonger. Give them an extra special blessing. If they pray, and we pray this prayer in Jesus' name, all of God's children say, Amen and amen. You may be seated in the place. You may be seated in the place. I'm doing too much yelling. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. And thank the Lord. Thank you, Cal, for joining. Everybody who has joined and not receive the right hand of fellowship. In, in other words, you didn't stand up in front of the church and, and we shook your hand. If you haven't done that, we want you to come right now. Come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Both of you. Both of you. Come on, Kevin. Come on, let's stand to our feet and thank the Lord right now for our new members. When you see them, when you see them in church, make sure you grab them, make sure you hug them, and you say, well, if they want to be grabbed and hugged, and make sure you say, welcome to the church. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you are part of us. Amen? And whenever you see them, only tell them the good stuff. They're going to learn the bad stuff all by themselves. Only tell them the good stuff. Amen? Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bless you, bless you, thank you, bless you, thank you, hey, let you go, bless you, bless you, thank you, thank you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, hey, oh, thank you. to him who is able to keep us from falling. He's able to present us faultless before the throne of God now, hence, and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. Now go and sin no more. Thank you, sir. Do me a favor. Make sure you go back up there and help us.